We're just having too much fun jamming out. Let's try some Addict by Nefx. A few videos back, I showed the US Amps USA 50HC. Make sure you check the link in the video description to see that one. But today we're gonna check out the four channel model, the USA SQ442. Let's get it unboxed, see what's inside. Mounting screws with washers. Also the birth certificate, which shows the true power output here as measured by US Amps. They do test each one of these before they go out to the customer. That's pretty cool. We also get a car audio warranty card. Make sure you fill it out and send it in if you want your warranty. And here's the manual, which highlights the specific model that you have, even though it covers three different models. They circle the one that you have and say, hey, you need a 250 amp fuse. We'll talk about that soon. Let's get it out of the package though and take a closer look at this beauty. They call this one silver. It's more of a light gray color. Looks really nice overall. And yes, it does come with the silica gel packet. Make sure you save this for your toolbox. If you were a fan of the US Amps amplifiers back in the 90s, you will not be disappointed by the look of this one. It looks exactly like the older models. Now we go to their website, and yes, they do have three different models currently available for sale. The SQ442 is shown here, $1,393 is what they list this one at. And yes, my friends, that does seem like a lot for a four channel class AB amplifier. I will leave some links in the video description. You can check it out and see what they have and the current price. Here on one end of the amplifier, you can see we have a crossover for high pass, full or low pass band pass. We have a variable low pass filter, variable high pass filter, also a gain. And we have the Tiffany style RCAs for four channels. On the other side, it's exactly the same. Just a mirror image, gain, high pass filter, low pass filter and crossover. So yeah, it's pretty much just a four channel amplifier with four inputs. There's no switch for two channels input, which I love to see. On the opposite end, we have the power input as well as the speaker outputs. The power inputs are zero gauge. Remote terminal there is for eight gauge because you know everybody needs eight gauge for their remote. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. As far as the speaker outputs, channel one here is at the top. Channel two is across. Channel three is at the bottom left. Channel four is at the bottom right. And if you want to bridge the amplifier, channel one positive, channel two negative, channel three positive, channel four negative. In full disclosure, I want to let you guys know that US Amps did pay for a slot for me to show this amplifier on my channel. However, it did not give them a commercial. It does not give them a positive review. It just gives me the ability to show off their product and give you guys my honest take on what I think about it. So you'll see that when we get to the pros and cons. As with the 90s US Amps amplifiers, this one has an acrylic bottom. It does have the US Amps logo in the center. It looks really nice. And yes, there is some plastic that covers up the acrylic and we wanna make sure that we pull this off and give you guys some sounds. Your daily dose of ASMR. Now let's move on to the ratings. Four ohms, four channels, 180 by four, two ohms, 300 by four, one ohm, 400 by four, bridge, 620 by two at four ohms, 750 by two at two ohms, with the 250 amp fuse required, external. 23.1 inches for the length, seven inches for the width, 2.1 inches for the height. And if you guys remember the previous video, that's exactly the same as the US a 50HC that we tested. Again, check links in the video description if you want to see that video. Now, instead of the typical amp dyno test first, we're going to do the speaker test. We're going to use the Gately audio box with a kicker gold letter 12 inch sub, as well as two sets of ELAC bookshelf speakers so we can get the maximum output out of this amplifier. We have it bridged in the three channel mode. Let's power it up. Watch for the green light inside the palm tree and hold your breath. Here we go.
overall, I really enjoyed listening to this SQ442 in the three channel mode. It did a great power in the subwoofer and also the mids and highs. But as we can see here by the thermals, the heatsink did get extremely warm, close to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, yeah, so make sure you use some active cooling if you're going to use this amplifier with subwoofers, especially even in the three channel mode like I showed. But yeah, overall, sound quality was great. Had no issues at all. Now let's move on to the amp dyno test, firing up the SMD Demorigineering Amplifier Dyno so we can test the power output of this amp. On the left, you'll see the power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno will also have a remote clamp so that we can calculate the amplifier's estimated efficiency. Ready. We'll start with a four channel test. We're gonna test two on the amp dyno. The other two are gonna be loaded exactly the same ohm load that we're showing for the test. First up, four ohms, four channel. It's rated 180 watts by four at 12 volts. As you can see here, our voltage is gonna be a little bit higher than that, but we got 229 and 227. So 228 average times four at 13.38. Next up, we're gonna jump over to the dynamic test. Check out the dynamic capability. We're running one kilohertz track here for the four channel test. When we get down to the bridge test, we're actually gonna do 40 hertz. But you can see right at 300 watts at 14.52. Now let's try two ohms in the four channel mode. It's rated 300 watts by four at 12 volts. We're gonna have quite a bit more than 12 volts here, but if you watch all the way to the end of the video, we'll show some lower ohm test. Here you go, 404 watts times four. <laughs> That's some big power here, my friends. Dynamically, we're closer to 500, actually over 500, about 517 watts times four at 14.44. That's over 2,000 watts total for this amp. Now, one ohm, four channel, it's rated 400 watts by four. Again, one kilohertz track here, certified. Notice, watch it stop and then jump. So what I noticed is the one ohm stereo and the two ohm mono test, it did not count cleanly at the very end. So we'll take that into consideration when we show the results. But uncertified, check this out, up to clipping, over 512 or so watts times four. Again, that's over 2,000 watts for this Class AB amplifier. That's a lot of power. And dynamically, even more. We're talking 750 watts times four. That's 3,000 watts at 14.23 dynamically. Crazy. Here are all the results. You can pause this if you want to see. Again, the amp is rated at 12 volts. We gave it a little bit more than that, but you can see here the efficiencies there as well. Not very good at one ohm. Two channel tests. We're going to bridge the amplifier again using channel one positive, two negative, three positive, four negative. That's going to get the bridged output of all four channels down to two, rated 620 watts times two at 12 volts. Certified test at 40 hertz. Certified takes us up to 1% distortion. And there you go, easily get that power. We get more like 780 watts times two at 14 volts. Very nice. Now let's try it uncertified up to clipping and see what we get here. Probably more than 700 and, oh yeah, look at this. Well over 800, <laughs> about 823 watts or so per channel right at 14 volts. Crazy power. What about dynamically at 40 hertz? And yeah, she is pumping out the juice. It keeps climbing. 954, 922 at 14.34, not far off from that 2000 watts total. Two ohms, two channel, it is one ohm stable stereo or two ohms bridge. So we're gonna try it bridged here, certified, 1% distortion. And there you go, over 700, you see it jump right there at the end. <laughs> over 700 watts, 14 and a half volts. But check out this uncertified, get ready for this. Yeah, boy, she's counting over a thousand watts times two, 13.85. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, well. Would you look at that? Yeah, there's a. Yeah, my friends, over 2,000 watts here for this Class AB four channel amplifier it is pretty strong for Class AB. But dynamically, we're even more. <laughs> like 2,300, almost 2,400 watts at 13.97. Here are the results of the bridge test. Make sure you pause this if you wanna see all the results here. One thing to note, these were done at 40 hertz and the efficiency at two ohms bridge was pretty low at 40%. I would say stressing this amp at two ohms bridge or one ohm stereo 
is not really recommended because you're just pulling a lot of extra current and not getting a whole lot of extra power. So in my opinion, you should keep it at four ohms bridged or two ohm stereo. Now we've taken the bottom plate off. Let's take a closer look at the internals. Here we see the US Amps USA SQ442 here on the circuit board. We also see the 63 volt 2200 microfarad rail capacitors. These are the Decon brand in the bright orange. Also 25 volt 2200 microfarad here on the power supply side. And we'll do a complete scroll here so you can see the output section, see the fan there. We'll go over here to the power supply section coming up with the dual transformers and filter caps there. And there you have it. One thing I would notice again about this one and the other amp is the fan that's in the center doesn't really do a whole lot for keeping the amp cool. Amps like this really need the transistors being cooled, which a tunnel cooling on the side or forced air cooling is going to be your best bet. Anyway, I digress to the pros and cons of this SQ442. Good stuff. Rated power plus. Has a nice potentiometers. Sankin outputs. Zero gauge for your power inputs. We like the color, the finish, and the acrylic bottom, of course. It is two ohm bridge capable or one ohm stereo capable. And it has nostalgia. Very strong. It reminds you of the 90s US amps amplifiers. Things that could be better. Generic capacitors and op amps. Four channels of input are required. There is no switch for two channel input. It doesn't have a bass remote. I know most people with four channel amps don't need bass remotes, but I like to use four channel amps in three channel mode, powering mids and highs and subwoofers. The size and efficiency is, is big. Efficiency is not good. That is class AB for you, my friends. And the price at over $1,300 for a four channel. Woo! Get out your wallet. There you have it, my friends. The uh, US Amps SQ442. And the review here from Wilson Audio Labs. Overall, the amp performed well on the dyno, got hot, but it is a class AB. It powered the speakers like a boss. I think this is a single amp solution for people who want some nostalgia in their car. I mean, it did well powering the subs as well as the mids and highs. I was smiling all the way to that Gately audio box that always makes everybody smile. Thanks again for watching. Appreciate you. Till next time, this is Big D. I'm out of here. Let's try the two ohm test with lower voltage. Again, we have this on the battery bank and I don't have any chargers going on, so you will notice the voltage drop pretty quickly. Let's find out what it does. Two ohms times four. It's rated 300 watts by four at 12 volts. We won't be able to get that low, but we should get mid 13s. Maybe we will get 12s. All right, 329 times four at 12.81. We have the US Amps SQ442 bridged. We're gonna run it here off the battery bank with no charger, so we're gonna drop voltage quite quickly. We may get into the 12s. Let's try it four ohms bridge. It is rated 620 by two. We're running a 40 hertz track so we can simulate being powered with subwoofers. Let's see what we get here. All right. We're still getting the 600, 640, 647, 643 at 12.94.